so my question again is, I want you to write down one or two things about the characters in the chapter that we read about. So if you've got your book in front of you, you can flip through it. And I want you to think about the characters. We wrote down a whole bunch last time. We're going to review them. And um, what are some details about them? Okay, so maybe who is the main character? Um, who did they see? Who are they having a conflict with? Okay, and so just write down one or two details really quick. I will give you maybe, I'll give you about a minute to do that. In the chat or where? You know what? Why don't you just write it on a piece? Of, actually, you know what? Write it in the chat. It actually would be much better, much easier. Write it in the chat, please. Hello. So we're looking through the book and we're answering the, what questions again? So write down one or two things about characters that you, that were in this chapter. Okay. So maybe tell me who is the main character. Maybe tell me what were they doing. Uh, just a couple details. So a couple things in this chapter. And you can tell me in the chat. Oh, yeah, somebody wrote Hatchet. That's another naturalistic one um, about a guy who gets stuck in the, Am or the Alaskan wilderness on a plane crash. Yeah, so just tell me in the chat um, one or two things that happened in chapter one or in, around those characters. So who were we talking about? Um, who did they see? What were they doing maybe? Just one or two couple things. You don't have to do complete sentences. We're just gonna briefly do it. While you're doing that, I'm going to read what some other people are writing. Ooh, so we got Sound of Running Feet and her friends were finding herbs when they saw a family of settlers. Uh, Sound of Running Feet was brave and stood up um, to the white settlers. Little Lark was a rule follower. Ooh, those are some good specific details. The main character was Sound of Running Feet, and they're riding on horses with two of her cousins, her best friend. Ooh, and we've got White Feather and um, some other people. Mm -hmm. Who else was in this? You could write... You can write um, something similar or just a couple quick details. You don't have to write in complete sentences this time. Ooh, Sound of Running Feet is leading the group of kids going home. Oh, yeah, so they were actually heading home, picking roots and herbs. She stood up to the white people. Mm -hmm. Ooh, maybe somebody can expand. What do you mean by st standing up to them? What does that mean? What did that mean standing up? Because, yeah, that was kind of our conflict. Mm, she's, yeah, kind of the leader um, as that group is kind of what we understood. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the white man wasn't very nice um, and exclaimed and said, you have way too much land. Um, there was a native... Um, boy uh, working for the white people and he seemed really mad yeah about answering the questions he was kind of angry he stood up to Jason upright because um, she believed it was wrong to build and destroy other people's land yeah do you remember what was there it was actually ooh the the very first part um, was there is actually your fluency do you remember what was there originally before the cabin what is the first sentence in your fluency you've been reading each night there's a cabin there now. Aspen trees. Aspen trees. Mm -hmm. There were some beautiful aspen trees. Um, Surf was brave and standed up for the white man, and it was their land. Yep, there were trees, yeah. Um, I did, you guys, I have to tell you one thing really quick. I listened to your fluency yesterday, and even compared to your first uh, fluency, so the very first time we did it to now, oh my gosh, you guys are getting so much better with your fluency. And then I was listening to some of you guys, because yesterday was adding more expression. Oh, I got chills. Some of you guys are doing a really good job, um, not only being very specific, slowing down. Okay, remember, it's not a race. Um, uh, I know some people are like, oh, I'm trying to get faster and faster. The only reason I got faster and faster reading is 
um, by practicing and being very specific first. So if you notice, sometimes if I go too fast, I go, "Uh oh, I got to slow down. So some of you guys are doing a great job with your fluency. Ooh, some of you guys wrote um, the aspen trees were gone. They've been so sawed off close to the ground. Um, Sound of Running Feet was being brave when she stood up for herself. And she, like you said, yeah, they could have. She thought about killing them um, or shooting at them. She did shoot at them, right? Um, they saw white people and they, and the white people she responded. shot at them and she made a hole in the pan. They were looking for um, golden. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so here's some uh, things that we also included. Um, we had old Joseph, um, who was... Um, her grandfather, and then we know that Sound of Running Feet, her father is Chief Joseph, um, and they were using, they were looking for gold in the river. So it was kind of next to river. Some questions we had were, um, why was the rifle, um, so, ooh, there was a conflict even with the rifle. Her dad didn't like it. And then they were, she had a conflict with the Sound of Running Feet, or Sound of, yeah, Sound of Running Feet had conflict with settlers. Um, and yeah, we talked about old Joseph's name. Okay. So, what I want us to do is I want you to now take a piece of paper. And it could be um, made if you've got this exemplar paragraph, page 13, you can write on here in the margins maybe. Or if you want to use um, notability, you, you can do that too, or just a random piece of paper. Let's look at this conflict piece, okay? So I'm going to, let's write down what are some of the conflicts? Because this is what we're going to really be comparing soon. Okay, so I'm going to write, um, what is the, so the conflict, so between, okay, so who was it between? And then what do we know? And ladies and gentlemen, do you just, can you only use information from, from this book? No. Didn't we read a article earlier on about how the government was coming in and the ranchers and the people, the miners and those people, what they were coming for? for? So we don't have to just include stuff from the book, but we can, we can talk about some of the conflicts that even know about so far. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, write down some details that we notice with a conflict. And let's write down what we know so far. So this is the wonder. Um, yeah, why don't you um, raise your hand? That's probably going to be the easiest. If you know of a conflict that we have seen so far and tell me um, who they were between first, okay, because there's a couple conflicts. Um, and now let me put this into two boxes. Riley, do you have um, a conflict that you've noticed so far? Yes. Um, I noticed that Sound of Running Feet and the White Man is, um, they have a conflict because he, they're just coming in um, to their, to um, their land and just taking it over as if it was theirs. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have a question about something. Yeah. When it says, like, the big father, does it mean, like, the president, or? What page is that on? It means the president, I think, because he lives in a faraway place called Washington. So. Yeah, and that's yeah. the president lives. The big father. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, the big father. I guess I didn't even think of that, but yeah, the faraway place in Washington gives us that hint of, yeah, probably the White House. So, okay. Um, so we've got, so I'll go ahead and just jot this. Actually, I want you to take a moment. What I'm going to give you guys some time to think. I want you to jot down. So um, we've got conflict between Sound of Running Feet and the white men. Okay. And they, um, so Riley had said they took their land at where their aspen trees were. I want you to take a moment, take maybe two minutes, and I want you to look through your book. What other conflicts do you notice in here? Or, um, again, we have read some other background stories with the Nimi Poo and conflict. So you can include some of those things, because like I said, we know we did. Mm -hmm. We read an article with the miners and stuff, um, miners and ranchers and settlers. 
Mm -hmm. So take a moment Question. and write down that stuff first. Yes, Berkeley. Question. Um, would, so you know when at the start it says, I am freezing, little lark, one of my cousins said, I think we should go back and take the long trail. Mm -hmm. Is that like um, a conflict between Sound of Running Feet and Little Lark because they disagreed on um, where they think they should go? Or you know what? I will count it because technically it is a small conflict. I don't know if it's going to make a big deal later, but write it down because technically you're right. It is a conflict. Iris, did you have another question? Um, I have a conflict. Okay, just wait. Um, wait one more minute. I want everybody to have a moment just to look down, look through their book, and write down some conflicts. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna do. Okay, so now go ahead and raise your hand if you've got another conflict. And if it's a new person, that's fine, I'll add it. If you want me to put it under one of the categories, let me know. So Iris, you have your hand raised. What's another conflict? Between her and her dad about the rifle. Hmm. Yeah, so Sound of Running Feet and Chief Joseph. Yes. Seth. Okay, and yeah, they had a disagreement, um, a conflict with um, the rifle. Mm -hmm. Do we really know why so far? Not, Not really. really. Yeah, we could, we made a prediction. We made some um, guesses, but we don't really know exactly why. And maybe we'll find out later. Okay, does um, anybody else have something? another conflict and come on the web or raise your hand I noticed something yeah in the first chapter it talks about her grandpa her dad but not her mom mm, that's a big interesting thing that might that might be a coincidence it may not be Ooh. Ooh. What are some conflicts between the Nimi Poo and the um, maybe settlers or miners or some stuff like that? They were using their trees. Yeah, so they are they're taking their land. Um, okay, what else? Ooh, and then they're doing it without permission, too. Okay. What are some other conflicts? Mm -hmm. Is this the only um, conflict with Nimi Poo and the Settlers? When they took their land, um, were they happy with it? Oh, Bailey, what do you have? Yeah. What do you got, Bailey? They said they had too much land, but they actually lost some land because they took it. Yeah. So they said they had... Actually, let me say, let me specify they, they said, or so the, um, I'm just going to say the white people, because that's who they refer to. The white people said they had too much land. Uh-huh, their cattle took over. Mm-hmm. Um, ooh, there was another person they had a, she kind of had a conflict with, Sound of Running Feet, and it wasn't. Um, it was a little bit with the white people, but she was really angry at somebody else towards the end. Storm boy? Yeah, so Jace, um, yeah, the storm, yeah, storm cloud, yep. So she had, um, 
Sound of Running Feet, and Storm Cloud. Storm Cloud, that boy. Yep. And what was, what was, what do you think, why did she glare at him? Um, because he, they, uh, he, um, what's it called? So um, can help her out? Because he um, went, um, to work for the white men when he was part of their tribe. Mm -hmm. Traded them. And also, um, he said, like, you can't even own a tenth of the land. Yeah. And then he also, yeah, said some words about, like, yeah, you, well, you don't use the land anyway, type of thing. You don't use the land anyway. Yeah, and he was working for those people that were taking over um, the those things. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so we've got this conflict. Okay, we've got there's and actually, like we said, it's not just it's not a very clear, easy conflict. I mean, there's a there's one that's a little bit stronger than others, and it focuses around the white men or the settlers um, and the Nimi Poo. Okay, and um, I mean, there's but there's also a lot of mini ones. So we somebody was saying between her cousin and Sound of Running Feet. And then we've got it also between Chief, Chief Joseph and Storm Cloud. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to compare, look at kind of comparing some things. OK, and um, what we are going to do is we are going to um, open this document, handout 13. A. So go to Schoology and take out 13A, examine an exemplar paragraph and put it notability or take out your um, notebook or in your workbook. And we're going to actually need some colored pencils. So if you've got some sort of colors nearby, um, if you're doing the workbook, you can use that. Otherwise, I'm going to use colors in my notability. Okay? I have them right next to me <laughs> perfect so if you need to go find colored pencils really quick go for it language arts get a math test today okay so what we're going to do is we are going to um kind of color code uh, the we're going we're going to look we're going to read this and we are going to identify some of these um, sections in here so we're going to look at a compare and contrast paragraph that's what this is and this is it says an exemplar paragraph because when I grade you you have different categories like exemplar proficient um, and not yet okay and an exemplar means that that is one of this is this is what you want to have your thing kind of look at look like at the end so it has everything you need okay so we have talked about so far um, these kind of paragraphs okay and we have looked at these two sec okay so the topic statement evidence elaboration evidence elaboration and a concluding statement okay so what we are going to do is we are going to read this and we're going to first identify this and figure out why is this a good, um, a good um, paragraph, okay? Uh, compare, um, or if it has all these things, okay? Because eventually you'll have to write a compare and contrast paragraph. And I mean, we've already done this and we just have to do it instead of just an informative one, like the past, we're gonna do it to compare and contrast. So like always, let's read this first, okay? Let's figure out, um, well, eventually we are going to identify the topic sentence. We need to identify evidence, elaboration, and concluding statement, okay? So let's read this. Would somebody, would somebody actually like to read this out loud? Maybe first page and then second? Again. 
Okay, Bailey, why don't you write the, read the first page and then Harper, you can read the second page, okay? Go ahead. Bailey, did you have your hand up to read or no? Yeah, no? Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and read that first page. Okay. Um, Unless you're waiting for me. Okay. When it comes to fasting challenges, are you careful? Are you a careful planner or daring risk taker? The main characters of the Nest Purse stories, Coyote and the Monster, and How the Beaver Stole Fire from the Pines, are both smart. Capable animals, but they approach the challenges in their stories in very different ways. Coyote does a lot of planning and, pre and preparation before he goes after the monster. That is endangering the world. He gathers pitch, carves, carves five stone knives, and makes a rope from hemp. This evidence shows that he is both smart and careful. He knows what it what it will take to defeat the monster, and he does not want to risk falling. He is determined to save the animals. Beaver, on the other hand, has a daring plan that involves stealing the fire from the pines and leading them on a merry chase that are sure to lose. Thank you. Okay, Riley. I'm going to have Riley continue then. Good job, Riley. Uh, I thought it was Harper. No, oh, sorry. But I don't know. Um, was it? Yeah. Who did I say? Harper? You said Harper. Okay, Harper. Sorry, that was you next. Because he is fast both on land and in the water, Beaver has an easy time tiring out the trees that are pursuing him. He eventually is able to distribute fire to all who need it. This evidence shows that Beaver is bold. When his opportunity comes to seize the coal, he takes it and never looks back. Both animals show that they are brave and willing to risk their own safety to help others. However, while Coyote's plan involves a lot of preparation, Beaver's plan involves waiting for just the right moment and then making a daring leap. Okay, so... Ooh, this is where kind of our connection, our things kind of connect. So we know in Coyote and the Monster, um, there was a conflict, and how beavers stole fire from the pines, there was also a different conflict. So in this paragraph, we are comparing and contrasting two things. Can somebody tell me what are the two things we're comparing and contrasting? You want to just come on the web and tell me what two things? They're two stories, actually. Um, we're comparing and contrasting. Stole pines from fire from the pines yeah like a careful planner and a daring this taker like how we're comparing and contrasting how the beaver was daring and the coyote was um we're careful comparing and contrasting the story how the beaver still fire from the pines and the story the coyote and the monster perfect yes so ladies and gentlemen um these are the two things we're comparing so yes this is a perfect example of comparing two points, okay? And we, as we can tell, are comparing um, Coyote and the Monster and how Beaver stole fire from the pines. So, ooh, chances are, since I asked that question, well, what are we comparing? Do you think that maybe could be our topic sentence? Ooh. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna use green, okay? Um, so I'm going to color a uh, topic sentence. I'm going to color it up here green. So if you choose a different color, um, that's fine. I'm going to use green. And I'm going to color my topic sentence. And I'm going to then color here the main characters of the Nez Perce stories, Coyote and the Monster and How the Beaver Stole Fire from the Pines, are both smart, capable animals, but they approach challenges in their stories in very different ways. Hmm. Okay. Ooh. You guys, our topic sentence is second. 
what would you call this first paragraph or this first sentence? What was that? The hook. Yeah, it's the hook. Or el gaucho in Spanish. So this is the attention getter. Or the hook. Or el gaucho. Okay, so in Spanish is el gaucho. Okay. So that's something to draw the author in. So when it comes to facing challenges, are you a careful planner or a daring risk taker? Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, our topic sentence is here. So we've got evidence. Let's do evidence. What color do you guys want to do next for evidence? Blue. Blue. Okay. So I'm going to circle. Call, I'm going to do evidence in blue. I like blue. Okay. And what would you guys say would be that first piece of evidence? So ooh, it says here they're both smart, capable animals. Okay, so it talks about, so I'm assuming it's, we're going to have one section about smart, capable animals. And then the second part, the second one is they, how they approach challenges. So there's actually two topics here. So where does it first give me evidence about smart, capable animals? What sentence do you think would um, come back? The coyote, like it says, the coyote does a lot of planning and preparation the beaver, on the other hand, a staring plan and involves stealing. Ooh, okay, so let's, um, we've got evidence here. And then we also have the beaver that has a daring plan. Yeah, so it talks about the coyote. Um, and if you notice, are they all mushed into one sentence? The coyote does a lot of planning, preparation before he goes after the monster. Beaver, on the other hand, has a daring plan that involves um, stealing from fire. No, they're actually separate. Because what do we have in between? What would you consider this part in between, ladies and gentlemen? About the coyote. Details? Yeah, those are, that's that elaboration. So let's grab, why don't we do maybe a red? Yeah, that's different. We're going to do red elaboration. That's almost red, white, and blue. So Coyote, he we have the main evidence, so he does a lot of planning. And then we've got our elaboration. Okay. So all of this is actually elaboration. We've got three sentences of elaboration. It kind of makes the story a little bit more interesting, huh? So... To restate, we've got our evidence. Coyote does a lot of planning and preparation before he goes after the monster that's endangering the world. Our elaboration, he gathers pitch, carves five stones, makes a rope, and this shows, so they're, ooh, they even say, this evidence okay, of Coyote shows that he's both smart and careful, mm -hmm, and he knows what it will take. Beaver, on the other hand, has a daring plan that involves stealing fire from the pines, Okay, Ooh, this should, I'm going to continue blue on the second page. And lead them on a merry chase that they're sure to lose. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that elaboration again is afterwards because he is both fast, both on water, sorry, um, fast on land and water. Beaver has an easy time tiring out the trees that are pursuing him. He's eventually able to distribute fire to all who need it. And this evidence shows that Beaver is bold. Mm -hmm. When his opportunity comes to seize the coal, he takes it and never looks back. Ah. Remember how I set up here? There was two, two pieces. They're talking about how they're smart and how they approach the challenges. Did they, accept, did they separate this, um, those two things, or did they kind of write them both together, ladies and gentlemen? Together. They kind of wrote them together, and that's okay. So they talked about, yeah, how the coyote's smart, and then also, oh, so he said how it's both smart and careful, but he also talked about in here how they approach the challenges. Same with beaver. Okay, they talked about how he approached the challenges, so he has a daring plan, and he's smart because he's able to um, he's able to grab it and run away. This first part, I want to point out, 
Ooh, remember what does you guys? What does contrast mean again? Do you remember we? That was one of our vocabulary words. Um, contrast means the um differences. Yeah. So this first section is the differences. So contrast. Okay, and that's important. Because if we have a compare and contrast story, we should have contrast. Guys, where is the comparing? The very end, yeah. So if we look, we've got at the very end how they are the same. So both animals, ah, so it talks about both, show that they're brave and willing to risk their own safety to others. Okay, ooh. Actually, I'm going to write this. Ooh, I was going to do it black, but should I write, is this evidence? Both animals show that they're brave and willing to risk their own safety to others. Yes. Yeah, so actually, I'm going to do that one blue. Both animals show that they're brave and willing to risk their own safety to help others. Um, if you cut off that green part, it looks like the American flag. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, I was seeing that red, white, and blue. And then our elaboration for both of them is, however, when coyote plan involves a lot of preparation, beaver's plan involves... It also, it's Are also that... the concluding statement. It is. You are right. Could it be the same thing? Yeah, it can. Yeah. So let's do the concluding statement. What's another color? Should we do... Oh. Yellow. Okay, so I'm going to do yellow's concluding statement. Orange. Okay, so this is also yellow. Yeah. Okay, so, hmm, good job um, identifying these things. So yes, we've got the concluding, or we have the topic statement, we have the concluding statement, and then, like I said, the other thing I wanted to point out was, yeah, that differenting, differ, that difference, the contrast, and reasons why they're the same, because, um, if you don't have both, well, then it's not a compare and contrast statement, okay? So you got to tell me how they're different, which is the first part, and this, and then how they're the same. You could flip them, so you could actually do the same first and then difference is second, but this person did differences first and um, the same second. So we've got evidence, elaboration, evidence, elaboration, and then evidence, and then, yeah, that elaboration is also our concluding statement. Awesome job. Are there questions on this, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. At the bottom, I want you to write this question. I want you to write in... The topic statement, the topic statement of this paragraph, okay, what is the correct answer? Now let me show you. So you should write that. I want you to write what the correct statement is. Don't just write A, B, C, or D. I want you to write, I want you to finish the sixth sentence. I want you to write, does it summarize A, the two Nez Perce stories? B, does it ooh, explain what it means to approach a challenge? C, does it describe specific challenges that our characters, that our characters face? Or D, does it tell me how two characters are alike and different? So what is this topic statement describing. I want you to finish writing what you think the correct answer is. Okay. Is it summarize two Nez Perce stories, explain what it means, describe specific challenges, or tell how the two characters are alike and different? Okay. Now in the chat, I want to know what you wrote. Did you write? And you can just write now in the chat. So if you have a full sentence here, awesome. 
tell me in the chat, what did you select? Did you choose A, B, C, or D? You can just write the letter in the chat. So you only have to write the sentence once. And then when you are, when a whole bunch of people have written it down, I want you to look, did you get something similar as other people? If not, I want you to re-look. Does the, what other people wrote, does that make more sense? Hmm. I have D, C, D, 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 C, D, D, A. Hmm. Now remember, we're not looking at the whole thing in general. We're just looking at the topic sentence. Hmm. So let me reread it again. The main characters of the Nez Perce stories, Coyote and the Monster, and How the Beaver Stole Fire from the Pines are both smart, capable animals, but they are approaching the challenges in their story in different ways. Oh, so let's see, Some are summarizing two Nez Perce stories, where they're not really telling me about the stories, they're not telling me what each one did, so it can't be A. Did they tell me what it means, how to get to a challenge? No, they tell me what the, the animals do. Does the topic sentence describe the challenges? Ooh, so this is where I think a lot of people are getting confused. In the um, story, it explains. Give me one second, then you can add on to it. So for C, in the story, it explain, it describes the challenges, but I'm only looking at the green. Just the topic sentence. Could somebody tell me why they chose D and why they why they think D is correct? Harper, um, actually, sorry, I have Ry uh, Greta and Riley. Um, I think it's um, D because it's the topic statement. It says you can see at the end. There's it says how the beaver stole. They're both smart, capable of Annas, but they approach the challenges in their stories in a different way. And that's what D says, different, like alike and different. And so, um, and in the second paragraph, it's sort of talking about how they're alike. And so I would say it's B because they're saying how it's different. Okay. Um, Ry uh, Greta or Harper, did you want to add on to it? Um, I think it's D also because even though it says... Um, it says in it that approach the challenges. It's more of how it speak. It talks more about how one approached it differently than the other one did. Okay, and that was that. Um, the approaching was in the actual paragraph, right? So in the evidence and the elaboration. Yeah, Harper. I said it was in the topic statement of this paragraph it tells how the two characters are alike and different because it says if they're both smart capable animals so that's what they're alike in mm -hmm. but they approach the challenges and the their stories in very different ways that's like the difference so that just yeah yeah and like i said ladies and gentlemen we are only looking at the green here. We're not looking at the rest of the paragraph. I just wanted to know the topic sentence. So just in this topic sentence, ooh, does that make a little bit more sense? Um, those of you that wrote C or A, would you change your answer now after listening to others? Yeah, okay, because yeah, I mean, you're not wrong that, yeah, it talks about um, those other things, but it depends on where. And the question asks in the topic statement. Good job, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, so, um, oh, we, we chose our own colors. Um, and... Ladies and gentlemen, then, so... We talked, we talked in detail with the topic st statement. I want somebody to tell me now. Um, we're going to just go over some of the, the other areas. 
So now we think about the whole body of it. Okay, we talk about um, the coyote and the beaver. How does then the coyote, or how does this author, um, how does he organize his body statement, or his body paragraph again? I, we kind of explained it a little bit, but could somebody come on the web and tell me how did he organize it then? Uh, Harper? Um, I didn't raise my hand for this. Oh, sorry, it was up. Um, Riley, how would you say he organized the body paragraph? Um, he organized it by, um, first he was saying, like, what's the difference between the two stories? And then he's like, he um, added the, um, like, compare, he did contrasts in the first part, and then he compared them in the second part. Mm hmm very good. Anything else that we noticed with the body? Mm. So how, how did he um, organize the differences? Did he smush the differences together and talk about coyote and beaver all in one sentence? Or what did they do? Um, Harper. He had like two different kind of areas. First he talked about coyote and then he's like beaver on the other hand has a daring plan. So like the differences. Yeah. Let me ask you too. He started with coyote first. Would you have started with beaver first if you wrote this story or would you have started with coyote too? I would have started with coyote because coyote is the one that I'm probably most like so and he's kind of like yeah. the calmer one and then it goes on to like this big other one that has like a daring plan. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, well, does anybody else have any other reasons why or want to explain? Which one you would have started first or would you have done it differently? Let me know. Which one did we read first? The monster. Yeah, so we read that one first. Which one was a little bit more, um, well, let's see, this. the thing is, ooh, are you a careful planning or a daring risk taker? So which one was maybe more exciting? I think the... Daring risk taker because it has more intense things yeah. than um, careful yeah. and calm. But then you're also like, oh my gosh, Beaver, this isn't going to work. And Coyote, you kind of know it's going to work because he's like, yeah, he's making sure that everything's perfect. Where Beaver just goes and does it. Yep. So, well, it's... they probably wouldn't tell the story if they didn't get fire, you know? Mm, very true. So yeah, I, I just wanted you to think about, um, so like if you write a paragraph in the future, what kinds of things would you put first? I mean, like somebody said coyote, maybe because you understand it a little bit better. Or sometimes, like even now, do you, even with school, do you do some of the stuff that's the most exciting first and then later do some of the boring, like if you thought something was a little bit not as exciting for that day? Yeah. I, I do. And this is kind of the thing, not that Beaver, not the Beaver story was boring. It's just that there was a lot more excitement that kind of happened. And you want to really just capture that attention and you want to make sure that they're interested, right? But so, also the coyote one had more details. It did. So to me, it was more interesting. Yeah. And oh, sorry, I didn't hear who said that. Could you repeat that? said that it was it was more interesting because of all the details that were included. Yeah, exactly. So, very good. Okay, what about the concluding statement? What uh, do you notice about the concluding statement about this? So, what kinds of things are included in it? Let's see, what does it say up here? Reinforce your essential idea. Hmm, did it reinforce? Did it t talk about the main idea? Did it talk about how they were different and then how were they the same yeah they did yes. but, but it was mostly just different because it's how coyotes plan and laws involves a lot of preparation and beavers plan just making the right woman and then making a daring leap yeah so this i mean with the same it talks about how they're the both how they're similar but then yeah this kind of reinforces it helps 
elaborate again on why they're the same, but and then yet, yeah, but it is different. It does compare the differences and it re kind of explains it. So, um, and this I thought was a good summary of what the coyote did. And then the beaver part was a good summary of this beaver section. So really what they did is now, you know how I said they separated the coyote and the beaver here with their um, evidence? Right here, they smooshed them together and it really helped re-summarize what we talked about. So let me reread this one more time out loud. So you have read oh, a really good compare and contrast statement or a paragraph, right? We have identified the topic, we've identified evidence, elaboration, and the conclusion. We know that there is an attention getter, and we know that we looked at where the differences, the contrast, and the compare was. So now that we've really dissected it, let's read it one more time. That way we can see how it all flows together. Okay, so when it comes to facing challenges, are you a careful planner or a daring risk taker? The main characters of the Nez Perce stories, Coyote and the Monster, and How the Beaver Stole Fire from the Pines, are both smart, capable animals. But they approach the challenges in their stories in very different ways. Coyote does a lot of planning and preparation before he goes after the monster that is endangering the world. He gathers pitch carves five stone knives, and makes rope from hemp. This evidence shows that he is both smart and careful. He knows what it will take to defeat the monster, and he does not want to risk failing. He is determined to save the animals. Beaver, on the other hand, has a daring plan that involves stealing the fire from the pines and then leading them on a merry chase that they are sure to lose. Because he is fast, both on land and in water, Beaver has an easy time tiring out the trees that are pursuing him. He eventually is able to distribute fire to all who need it. This evidence shows that Beaver is bold. When his opportunity comes to seize the coal, he takes it and never looks back. Both animals show that they are brave and willing to risk their own safety to help others. However, while Coyote's plan involves a lot of preparation, Beaver's plan involves waiting for the right moment and then making a daring leap. Awesome. So um, that is all we have to do. You do not have to turn this in today. One of the things, I don't know if you noticed, but I really tried to pause and take a breath or think about pause between some of these things. If it helps you when you're doing your fluency today, take a breath whenever you see a period. Or what I like to think is I just go pause when I see a comma. And try to do a little bit more expression. It's a little bit easier today. Um, is there, I was going to say, in, when you're reading about the aspen trees, is there any um, dialogue in your um, no. fluency? No, I think it stops right before the dialogue. Oh, no, it is. It's what is the sound of running feet as my friend White Feather? Okay, so if you notice that for your um, fluency today, you actually have um, somebody speaking. So that is probably when you will have a different expression. Whereas when you read the other stuff, you're reading it like an informative text. But when you get to, uh, um, here, let me pull it up. When you get to the, um, what do you call it? Dialogue, try to give a little bit more expression. What is it? Sound of running feet. And if you notice, it's a question mark. So I have that expression of, what is it? So really ask it as a question. Does that make sense today, ladies and gentlemen? What people? And if you notice, I declared it. Okay, so we have our, um, you've talked about, have you guys talked about interrogative questions and uh, declar declarative statements? Not yet. So think about, question when you read this and then declare this white people i said indians do not build cows okay so when you're reading this try to use some expression pause if you need to take a breath between the sentences to help you pause for now until you can get it um, more clear later okay you have this fluency to do your audio 
and then you have um, to read 30 minutes. I would like to see, oh, that student left. Um, I would like, um, let me look. Oh, those students decided not to stay. Okay. Um, oh, Ava, um, you're the only one that I want to talk with briefly. Everybody else, you can leave. Okay. Um, so, who are the people that have to stay again? Sorry, I just... Oh, just Ava. Bye, thank you. Bye. Okay, so Ava, I was going to show you really quick. Um, make sure when you're doing your fluency that you're recording the audio. So it looks like you're showing your screen, but make sure that you are recording your audio. That way I can give you points, okay? Does that make sense? So like your one from Tuesday, um, I didn't have any audio with. And then let me see, Wednesday? I can't remember on the back of my head, so let's look really quick. Oop, that's Friday. Jumped. And it looks like Wednesday you didn't have audio either. So make sure that you're listening to it afterwards because number one, you have to, um, on Friday, well, you should be doing it each day, but you should be doing your evaluation and then you can listen to it because you have to listen to each one of them. If it doesn't have audio, well, then you can't hear it, okay? So make sure that you listen to it afterwards and listen to the audio and then you can mark off um, did you read accurately? Stuff like that. Does that make sense? If you need help with the audio, make sure you ask, okay? And I can send a video too on how to do audio. Do you know how to? Yeah. You do? Okay. So just make sure that there's audio because I want to, it looks like you're recording it, but I'm not hearing it and I want to make sure you get points, okay? That is all I have. Bye.